All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to week two. Are you excited? I love menus. We're at week two. Yay. All right. See a bunch of people waving. So first off, we have a special guest with us who will take the floor right now. It is our delightful and wonderful Chef Janet. Everybody give big hands. Round of applause for Chef Janet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chef Rachel. Uh, thank you, Chef Suzanne. Nice to see everybody here. I just wanted to stop by, say, hey, how's your week two going? Are you guys having a fun week two? Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. You guys know that next week, the turkey lands, right? It's getting ready to just slide right onto your table, right? All right, yeah, look at that. I got the little, the, the bird is flying. Oh, Paul, you're great. All right, so what I'm gonna just remind you guys is a couple things. Remember, assignments are still due at the same time, so plan well, and if you're really good, uh, you know, submit early. And then that way you can enjoy your time off. But just remember, everything is still due the same time uh, on Tuesday, 11.59 p.m. Central. And in your wonderful little chat box, uh, if you need to get a hold of me for anything, need to talk, need to go, Chef, I just don't understand life. Can you help me? Well, I can get you to the people who can actually help you about that. But I am here to listen to you. And in that case, uh, is class going to be the same time next week? Guess what? I bet Chef Rachel and Chef Suzanne have a surprise for you. So pay attention. And other than that, enjoy yourselves. Be safe out there when you have your holiday. And we expect to see you back in class the following week. And if you need anything, you know where I am. Chef Rachel, Chef Suzanne, thank you so much for your time. Bye, guys. Thank you, Chef Bye, Janet. Chef Janet. <laughs> hey, Chef. Say bye. All right, guys. So we, I'm going to share with you right now. We are in week two, right? And here we go. Look at all the fun, important items we have this week. We have Thanksgiving. We'll be, because Thanksgiving's on Thursday, and we're not going to make it so you guys have to actually put down the drumstick to show up to a live session, because I, well... You know, when I worked in the industry, I still worked every single Thanksgiving. Luckily, we're in academia, right? So we can actually take the day off. Yay! So our live session will be on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We also have a delightful discussion that will be due on Saturday at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time with two peer responses. You have to look at people's posts and respond to their posts, not just respond to what they said about your post. You have to go on and look what they wrote and respond. And I will tell you, for many of years that I have been in school and in, in school right now, I still have to do discussions. I have two discussions due tonight for my classes, and we'll have two peer responses due on for mine as well. So discussions are a way of life. And then we have our assignment, which will be due on Tuesday at 11.59. So remember, live session will be at 6 p.m. Central Time. Then we'll have our discussions. They'll be fun, so much fun. I love discussions. And then our assignment will be due on Tuesday. And remember for your discussions, I'm sure you've heard this before, but saying I 100% absolutely agree with you is not really a response. You wanna say why you agree. It's kind of like when you do your evaluations, right? You say the class is great, but why is it great? You say the class sucks, why does it suck? That's the same thing with your discussions, but you're doing it in a nicer tone, right? Because you don't want to tell anybody that their ideas are horrible. You have to take a step back, think about something to write, and say, I see your point, Eve, but have you looked at this instead? Think about those kind of things when you're thinking about your delightful discussions, right? Everybody understand? Yes? Now that it is uh, coming close to Thanksgiving, I'm going to start doing everything like Bob's Burgers and how he talks to the turkey. And be like, yeah, that's good. Good job. 
right? Nobody laughing, some people laughing, some people, Roy got it, Roy gets it. Roy, you're gonna be my Bob's Burger guy. <laughs> so, but now to talk about last week's assignment, I'm going to turn it over to Chef Suzanne and you guys are gonna talk about it for the next couple of minutes so that we can clear up any comments, concerns before you resubmit, right? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to share my screen, I hope. Is this, uh, is everybody seeing week one's assignment? Yes? Okay, cool. All right, so last week's assignment, um, there were some folks that did have some issues with this. Um, and so I'm just kind of going to go over it again, because remember, uh, you're able to, so don't freak out if you didn't get the grade that you're uh, and you're not happy with the grade, remember, you can make adjustments to the assignment and resubmit. You have until Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. to make some adjustments. So I'm going to go through this again real quick one more time just to kind of touch on it. All right, so you were given three different restaurants. And so for each one, you had to identify the type of menu that would be used uh, in that restaurant. And then also explain why, kind of like what Chef was just talking about with your discussion forums, where you can't just say, you know, this is what it is with no explanation. So you had to have the why. And so the information as to the different types of menus, you can find in two different places. We went over it last week in the live session, and it was also in the week one lesson. There was uh, one of your assignments that you had to go through had the different types of menus listed. So like right down here, like a la carte, limited cycle. So you decide, so you tell me, which menu you think, say the Golden Eagle. So if you think that the Golden Eagle would use an a la carte menu, you need to explain why. And when you explain why, you actually need to elaborate. Don't just say um, an a la carte menu is everything listed individually. Because that is true, that is exactly what an a la carte menu is, but you need to explain why you think that that a la carte menu is best suited for the Golden Eagle. Or if you think a California menu would be better. So again, why would that be better? So that was what this assignment was. So you had to do that for each of the three. Tell me which type of menu and why you believe that that's the way it would be. All right, so for anybody that, that is not happy with their grade, it's okay, don't freak out. Go ahead and adjust it and resubmit it by Tuesday. And some folks, some folks did, you know, did a great job on it. Uh, so don't, but like I said, don't freak out. You got plenty of time to resubmit. All right, does anybody have any questions that they wanna go over on about that real quick? I am still grading, so that if you didn't, if you know that you didn't do what, what I just talked about, that's okay. You still have time, and you can still resubmit. Okay. Everybody good? I love it. I love it. Awesome. How are you feeling, Chef Suzanne? Are you feeling better? I do feel better. I do feel much better. I feel like everybody knows now not to freak out and that they can resubmit. That's what I'm here for: is to regret. Grade and regrade. That's, that's my thing. It's my jam. <laughs> yeah, because look at it this way. It's a great way to really, we want you to be able to have all the tools and knowledge that you can possibly gain from here to be able to go off. And even if you don't start off your own business, this is stuff you're going to have to know if you're going to be a manager, because we're not... We're not training line cooks here. We're training managers and owners, right? Everybody, right? Yes, thumbs up, yes. Yeah, managers and owners. And even if you go in and you're gonna work and, you know, manage like in a hotel and manage, be the executive <laughs> chef, you still need to know all of this stuff. So it's very important and that is why it's also important to make sure that you look at this stuff and when you're looking at it, look at it like you're going to present this to your GM or to an investor, right? Especially for assignments. Now, I actually did a, I did a, I helped a friend of mine, um, start up a company and this past summer and what we did was we met we talked to the actual potential investors 
And what we did was I got, I know it's black, black on black, right? Can you see through the shine, the nice pretty folder? I presented this folder to the actual investors and it had pretty paper in it and it was all nice and presented but i need to make certain and think of it like this when you're looking at your assignments and doing stuff if we ask what is the demographic for the area if you guys can see there's just a link there i am your investor i can't press on that link it's not going to open for me right not on this piece of paper. So that's why it's key to, you may have a link, but your investors, like, that's a great link. What was all the information? What, what did you find out? I don't know what this link is. I can't press on it. So when you're doing the assignments, think of it like you're presenting to an investor or to your GM, and you have all of that information written down. You can provide the link to cite your, because that was your reference, but you still need to add all of that information. So think about that when you're looking at doing your assignments. Is that a good way to look at it, Chef? Yes? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, making sure to give as much information as possible anytime you do an assignment. You don't have to write big stories about things, but make sure that if somebody uh, is is reading your work or in this like chef just showed uh, remember you know you're meeting with somebody and you've got to, to show them information and you have a link right so you got a piece of paper nobody can click on that piece of paper right and and sometimes links we've all seen these links can be like three two three four line long and you have to make sure that oops that's a lowercase b and that's a backslash and if you get those wrong you got to type it all in again right and so an investor might go nope I'm good I want to invest. I don't have time for that. Right. So you want to put your, always put your best foot forward. Exactly. That's what we want you to do. Put your best foot forward. You see, make sure that you know your information, which is why it is so important that you do the research. Am I right? Yay, research. And this week we're talking about demographics. Now, demographics are so important for understanding your clientele. How many people have heard of demographics before? Anybody? Anybody? Yes, I saw Austin. Yep, Amy, I see you guys. So what do you think is an example of a demographic? You guys can talk now. Uh, it's a group type or a uh, uh, segment of society that uh, focuses on some kind of uh, cuisine. Your yep. elderly, the young adults, those are your target demographics if, for any restaurant. Your yep, having that target demographic, right? I believe it not only, you know, goes with like age and young adults, older adults, senior adults, but it also can go with, um, do you have more Asians? Do you have uh, more Spanish? Um, do you have uh, more white? Um, what is, you know, the demographic as well as, you know, older, younger children? It also can go by race. Exactly. Those are all parts of it because, and you need to gather this information because it's key, it's key to knowing, is your concept going to work? Is your menu going to work? Will people come and spend their money on your establishment? So that's why it's so important to do the research. And there are a boatload of different things you can do to figure out how to get the information. You have your Chamber of Commerce, you have different uh, business associations, like we have a downtown business association around us. We have uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau. You have the census.gov here, which I will open up for you guys. And this is a great tool to use because it has all of this great info. And let's say I'm going to look for, what should I do? What town? Shout out town, any town. Yes. Bartman, Mississippi. What'd you say? 
Spartan, Mississippi. V. Oh, P. V. Oh, B. Barman. Barman. While it is. Wow. It will come up with all of this awesome information for you. You see that? Boom. Just like that. A wealth of knowledge at your fingertips. Isn't that great? You can do it for any of them. I can do it for, um, I'm going to say Lowell, Massachusetts. I grew up next to Massachusetts. The delayed start of the Industrial Revolution because we had all the mills. And you pull up all of this great information that you can use. Isn't that great? And then you have right over here, town city of Lowell, and it gives you your population. And if you felt like, I wonder what it looked like in 1997, it'll tell you right there. Isn't that great? So this is a great tool that can help you. And it's a good start for things, right? Because... If we now delightfully go back. Chef, can I tell my, uh, my example of uh, demographics, my favorite example? Yes, please. Awesome. All right. So I would think that there's one business that love them or hate them, everybody understands and can relate to. And that is what? McDonald's, right? So the best way to think about demographics is I know a lot of you have kind of got in your mind that you want to serve everybody, that you want your, you, you don't want to single anybody out, you want to serve everyone and you want to make everyone happy. But in reality, that's not possible. I mean, I suppose technically anything is possible. But when you're looking to start a business, whether it's a restaurant, food service or anything, you really want to have a good idea of who you want to serve. Right, and so McDonald's, everyone knows, everyone can relate to, like it or not, love, love or hate them, you get it. We've seen it our whole lives. So the best example, McDonald's is not trying to win over any millionaires, right? They are not putting out commercials geared towards millionaires. They are not trying to bring in business from millionaires. They're not spending their hard-earned marketing dollars trying to bring in millionaires. Now, if a millionaire shows up, is McDonald's gonna turn them away? No, they're totally gonna take their money, right? So they, they'll, they'll feed anybody, but they're spending their marketing dollars on who they believe is most likely to come there and eat there. Their target demographic, right? So that would be like, what? College students, right? Young families, people in a rush or in a hurry, right? So. You've got all these different ways that you can, and so to me, that is like the best example ever. McDonald's is never going to tell that, that millionaire, go away. Absolutely, they're going to sell them that Big Mac, but they're gearing towards certain demographics because they can't reach everybody. They can't try to bring in everyone, so they know who they want, and they're going to try and bring them in. So there's my story. There's my McDonald's. That's a great story. I love it. Now, I saw Gabriel, you have a question? Good point with McDonald's too. I mean, they even use like their dollar menu, which reaches, you know, a very, very wide uh, span of people. You know, everybody's got, a new, I think their new commercials like, oh, I found a dollar in a couch. And they're like, yeah, that's not a dollar. That's a sausage McMuffin or whatever. Um, you know, so they do, they do reach out to everybody. Um, my question is, is like in my situation, I would, I want to do like a food truck. So like, you know, with the, with the menu that might change or like kind of be like, like, let's say if it's a taco truck, but do different, you know, Korean tacos and, you know, different flavors of tacos. Um, so like, what would you try to do like for your demographic with that? I mean, if I'm just like try to go out, you know, since I'm mobile and I'm not at one location. That's a great question. Oh yeah. It's a great question. Sorry. Were you 
Still going? Yep. yep. No, I'm done. That's oh, okay. Um, and how many food truck people do we have? Raise the hands. Do I see a couple of food trucks? So you have your style of food, right? And right. then you're going to have what type of food you're going to want to actually give people. Is this going to be like, because no matter what, you need to know your demographic so you can reach your target market because nobody has a million dollars to spend on marketing or a billion dollars to spend on marketing. So using narrowing it down and knowing your locations also means you need to know the laws and regulations of your, of your location because there are some like in like there are some towns like such as steamboat i would not be able to open up a food truck because they do not allow it and in your town like you will find that they have different laws and regulations about where you can set up and if you're going to be family if you're trying to go for more family food you're going to try to have your food truck next to a park right but if you're trying to get that lunchtime rush from all those professionals, where do you think you would actually put your food truck? I would put mine like right wherever the center of the business, I, you know, the business district downtown exactly. or, or, you know, um, and, you know, another thing that I think has really changed a lot of, change I guess the game so to say is the whole social media thing too because that you don't have to be anywhere you can reach you know all your followers and just you know if you're going to the general public you can reach you know hundreds of people at a time and you know hey if you want Gabe's tacos I'll be at third and main street you know or whatever people are always on their phone checking statuses and uh you know what we all do you know yeah and see that and it's like hey i might be in that area we can hit this food truck and you know so i i think that has uh changed you know being able to reach out to your demographic i guess uh which is a great tool to use i i guess is the bottom line is you know the yeah. social media is a great tool to, and it is a great tool. Graphic, yeah. Yeah, it's a fantastic tool. And that's where you need to really know who you're going to be reaching because you may be trying to go for, let's say you're kind of trying to do a baby boomer. I'm going to pull up my screen right now for you guys to show the different ones, right? We have baby boomers. And then we have the different generations, right? Because we're talking about um, you know, how many people, how many are here are millennials versus generation X versus generation Z? Do I have any generation Z's with me here? Anybody? Yes. Yes. Any millennials? Yes. No, no. Well, they have, you have those styles, but then as Gabriel, you're talking about, we also have right down here, the technology generations. You have the digital immigrant versus the digital native. A digital native is somebody who grew up with technology, who is really good at social media, who knows the ins and outs of like, because they grew up with a computer. They grew up with cell phones, like the nice tiny little computers that we get to hold in our hands and, you know, binge watch Hulu and Netflix and Amazon and all that stuff. We have it right here. But if you're like me, a digital immigrant, where I did not grow up with a computer uh, in my house, we like, we didn't get our computer until I was in high school. And they even did the, I don't know if they still do it in school, but we even had the like old school, like typing, computer typing class that you had to take and you could win the banana trophy for typing. Did any of you guys have that? Nobody? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. I saw a couple. And, you know, for me, social media isn't that big of a deal. I don't really post that much on social media. I'll do it for my business. 
because I want to make certain that I'm out there and I'm on that platform. But for myself, I don't, I think the last time I put something on Facebook was like my pictures of my wedding, which was six years ago. So you know, knowing those styles of demographics is really, really important. So you know who you are actually going to be focusing on and who you want to market to, because we don't have enough money to market to everybody. We just don't. If we had that much money, I mean, like if you had a billion dollars to market, would you really spend it on marketing or would you like buy a new house? I would buy a new house. So think about it like that. Um, I did think I saw somebody with their hand raised. Was it Lisa? Yeah, Lisa. My internet keeps going on and off. But in reference to the food truck, what I've been doing is I've actually been interviewing other food truck drivers, asking them what the best areas are, where the business is better, everything like that. So I've been doing many interviews, getting ready to start a food truck so I know what is good in the area, what's not good in the area, who's selling the best food and where, where are they selling it at. So that's been my research and my knowledge so far on trying to start a food truck business. And that's a great way to do it because you want to know, and it's an awesome way to figure out who your competition is too, right? Because right. you're going out there, you're figuring out what they know and then and their price you, yep the price range because you want to know all that information about your competition what type of menu are they doing is their menu working is it not working that way you can take that information and see what you need to do for your business so that's a great way to go about getting research uh, i think i saw somebody else with their hand up erica so my thing is, I don't know if I want to do food stuff or if I want to do catering, but I do want to do something with vegan and uh, vegetarian. And I live in North Carolina, so it's a lot of people that migrate to North Carolina that um oh, that doesn't eat meat or they don't have any type of they don't like to eat a lot of um um animal based products. So, but it's not a lot of restaurants, and I've never seen a, a vegan food truck, so that's what I'm trying to do, but I don't know how that's going to work with the integrating with um, bringing people, different people in for that. Well, that is, but that's part of about your demographic, right? That's part of figuring out all that information about the location you want to be for for those who want to cater, for those who want to, you know, do the food truck. I mean, people say, well, I'm going to go everywhere. But Colorado, where I live right now, Colorado is a big, big state. There is no way I'm going to be able to cover the entirety of Colorado in one day. That's a lot of driving. That's a lot of gas. So it's good to know what location you want to be in and then work towards getting to where you really are going to be because and knowing the laws and regulations for the place there are certain places um where we have some breweries in town and they'll actually pay you to show up and every monday and wednesday at like they pay you like you know two thousand dollars a month eighteen hundred dollars a month to show up every tuesday and wednesday so that you can provide food for their clientele so knowing those type of things is really really important and knowing like will your food truck is it good food to that would fit in next to a brewery or is it not so much those are things you need to think about and then if we look at all the different ones. We have gender. Why do you think gender is important? Anybody? Why do you think gender is an important demographic? Two different eating styles. Yeah, two different eating styles, right? What if some, like, um, I might be on a diet or 
you know, when I was pregnant, I was like Chris Farley on Saturday Night Live, Mall Girls. If you haven't seen it, it's hilarious. But I did the total like, leave me alone, I'm starving. You know, like I ate everything in sight and my husband tried to keep up with me and he could not keep up. There was no way. So, you know, like knowing that style of stuff or they might be lighter. Maybe the like they're going to go for more of a salad or they're going to go for, you know, more of that protein based where it's not so fried food versus maybe you're surrounded by a bunch of college dudes and they're wanting to eat fried greasy foods, that kind of thing. So that's where gender can come into play. What about race? And what do you guys think for race? I mean, I think that's self-explanatory because like, if you do like um, like a Mexican American cuisine, or if you're gonna do like an Italian type cuisine, you're gonna get your demographics. If you got more of Italian in your area, you might want to do Italian restaurant. Or if you've got like um, a Spanish American people in your area, you might want to do a Mexican American area of expertise because you'll get more people that way. Right. And then what about your household income? Why do you think income is important to know? That's when you're going to base everything, your prices on and the amount of food that you're going to be actually giving your customer. You have to make it affordable. Exactly. Perfect. Chef Suzanne's example, McDonald's, you guys remember, are you going to have where are you going to find a McDonald's? Are you going to find it in a super wealthy part of town or are you going to find it in a different area? Everywhere. Yeah, I emphasize everywhere. everywhere. You find them everywhere. <laughs> a super nice part of town. Everywhere. You would not believe where they stick those things. Well, you know what's actually funny too is because Fort Collins, and this goes back to Erica, uh, Fort Collins, we're very, very healthy here, and we don't have very many fast food chains at all. We have over 660 restaurants in our town, and like a small, small percentage of them are actually like fast food chains because, and they're all focused around the college because we have Colorado State University. So all college kids, they're going to want Taco Bell. They're going to want McDonald's and Wendy's. So a good chunk of them are all around the college so that the college kids could get to it. Uh, what about education level? Why do you think that's important? What do you mean by education level? Like, did people graduate from high school? Did they graduate from college? Did they get the associate's degree? Did they have their master's, PhD? Type of foods that they've been introduced to or they're used to eating would basically. Well, what would that have to do yeah. with um, what kind of food they're eating if they educational wise? Well, because you think generally at school, if people went away to school, then they were exposed to different, like, uh, for instance, my cousin's kid. Uh, in, from Kentucky, she went to, to Texas A&M down in Corpus Christi. There's a whole different set of cuisine down there that she was exposed to that she didn't have growing up in Kentucky. And now she's now she's out on the because of her she's down on uh, out on the West Coast. She's in Oregon. So yeah, but that that's location. That's not education. But, but that can be educated. Yeah, so. yeah but she went away to school but for her education. Like educated she stayed locally, girl. so she was exposed to something different. And when she came back to Kentucky, um, now there's a, a whole Tex-Mex thing up there that uh, it, it's migrated up there since I moved away. And uh, going up there, I can actually get Tex-Mex, which was not something that was up there 20 years ago. Um, very good. Yeah, that's a great point. You brought up the point, Mandy, very well. And for Gabriel, think about it, though. Technology is very, very new. Like, all the stuff, like, the amount of stuff that we have done technology-wise 
is insane. Now we can do online culinary classes, right? Like you guys are in an online culinary school. How cool is that? But for me going to college, I didn't have that. And so me going to Ohio, I never heard of, um, uh, Oh, what's the, um, it's the, um, I never heard of kraut burgers before my mom's English and bless her heart. I love my mom dearly, but nobody taught her how to cook. Everything was like, you know, now I can say it was blackened, you know, <laughs> instead of just burnt, you know, put that, that twist on it. but like, I never even saw what a shallot or a garlic clove look like growing up. So being able to go to school, I was able to experience something I'd never would have experienced before is it pierogies i think it's pierog is the pierogi oh, yeah. the little potato yep. thing yep. yeah those things are huge in ohio i never yep. even saw one before in my life i never heard I of it millions before. of them yeah see i never heard of it before or even tried it i never even knew what country uh the chicken fried steak or country fried steak oh, i no. had no <laughs> idea what that was and i didn't know it until i went to school went through the cafeteria and then was like, Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds, I guess I'll try that. And then that's when I, the first time I ever saw it. So when you think of education, you have to think about what opportunities they have, not just by moving away, but in that facility that they have, like what they're exposed to in that cafeteria, because that may be a brand new thing that they have never even seen before. So that's my why mother only went, yeah, my mother only went a couple hours away to nursing school in Louisville. Um, and of course that was back in the early sixties, but, uh, she had never had spaghetti before there. Um, they'd had like, you know, elbow noodles, you know, elbow macaroni at the house, but she'd never been exposed to pizza or spaghetti. She, there's a whole, uh, well, Louisville's just phenomenal anyway, but, she was exposed to all this Italian food. So, I, I'm still saying that's the location thing. I, I don't know, like, where, I don't, is, I guess what I don't understand is, is it education of our customers or education of us? No, the education right. of your customers. And also think, if somebody has a higher education, right? I, mean, I, I just think that, you know, the flavor that we're going to be giving out to these people is going to win them over whether or not it's a lawyer standing next to a bomb. I mean, I don't. But then, you know, if you're doing molecular gastronomy, say you're going to do molecular gastronomy. Now, how many people know molecular gastronomy here? No, where you do the infusions and your foams and your immersions and you get the essence. So like you can, they have awesome machines that like $10,000 machines where you put in a ghost pepper and it'll take all the heat away. So you can actually taste what a real ghost pepper looks like. Now, if you're in, say you have a higher level of education, that means you'll have a higher amount of income right? Like if you're have your PhD, you're going to make more money if you're a doctor. So that's also going to affect your target market. Maybe you're going to be able now, Gabriel, to have that food truck because you know the income. Maybe you can set it at a higher price because you know that you're going into that des district where you can give people a quality product that they want to pay the price for right like chef suzanne said it goes back to mcdonald's mcdonald's everybody knows what it is everybody knows it's fast and it's cheap and mcdonald's isn't going for the wealthy people right, right. but if you're doing a twist and you want it to have that you know foam infusion or do something creative that's where knowing this stuff is really really important and that's also where it goes down to your lifestyle also, because you need to look at, you know, what type of, like, are they going to be in, are you doing this in a city? Are you doing it in a small town? Well, um, yeah, probably like, am I doing it at 3 p.m. or 3 a.m.? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's important to know the information so that you can prepare and you can make the plan. Because when you do... 
this is going to help you decide like what's going to motivate your customers to purchase your product. Right, you want right. them to know, like, are they going to be motivated by price? Are they going to want to know, like be about the experience? Because if they're all about the experience, then maybe you need to re-examine like what your concept is. Do you need to make it, put that into your culture that you're going to make it the best service possible while they're enjoying your food? Because do you guys remember what were the two things that combine to create your product from last week? Do you guys remember? What were the two things? Wait, say that again, Chef. What are the two things that combine to create the product? It was yeah. atmosphere and there was something else. I'm trying to remember. That was, yeah. You guys remember? It was your tangibles. Yeah. Oh, tangibles. Yeah. Your tangibles. What's your tangibles? That's your, the stuff you can touch, touch, right? Touch. Yes. And then that's your intangibles. So it's the experience, it's the service that you're giving because you're going to expect a different menu at McDonald's than you are from a high-end restaurant, right? Remember, because that's, that, that's going to make your product, right? And then you have to think about like when you guys go out to eat and it's, you know, your 10-year wedding anniversary and you want to go out to eat, where are you going to go? Where would you guys want to go? I'm going to Olive Garden. You going to Olive Garden? Where are you guys going to go? McDonald's. 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 <laughs> Capital yeah, Grill. So Country. I heard Capital Grill. Taco, Taco Grill? Capital Grill. Oh, Capital Grill. You're going to do a steakhouse? Are you going to celebrate? Are you going to be like, it's hey, it's 10 years and I didn't kill you. Yay. <laughs> we made it this far. You know, you're going to celebrate, right? <laughs> you didn't drive each other crazy. Somewhere with a bar. You're going to go to the bar? A good one. I have kids. I'm too tired to go to a bar now. You need to, I want to go have like a That's nice fun. dinner somewhere without a child saying, Mama, Mama, Mama. Mama. Room service then. Yeah, I want to have that great service. I want to have that fantastic environment around me to to unwind and to know like, oh, okay, yeah, like that's like there are no kids around. I don't have to worry about hearing screaming kids and thinking that it's mine. Like, okay, awesome, you know. So, so yeah, really think service. about it. You yeah, you have to think about the great service. You want to make no. sure that you are matching what your market is looking for and look at it this way when you're looking at your your demographics it's a very large picture right there's so much information and it's that's a starting point for you this is where you begin and then you bring it down then you start narrowing it down to what you actually want it to be because think of it i am I'm Catholic, like every Lent, any Catholic people, anybody, anybody, nobody? So going to fish fry every Friday. Hi, you're going to do fish Friday, right? Yeah. I'm always like sushi Fridays yep. because it's fish Friday. So I, for me, if I know that I, there's a lot of Catholics in my location, I'm going to make sure that there's a fish special on Fridays during Lent. I'm going to make sure that I don't put a boatload of bacon and sausage and stuff because they're not going to eat with me. They're going to go somewhere else where they can get sushi Friday, right? So that's where it's important to know these things so you can be able to actually capture these, your group. You want to make sure, and this is all going to go back to your marketing because you want to make sure, certain that you are actually marketing correctly because if you're getting your target and remember everybody's always like oh i'm going to market i'm going to market to everybody you don't have enough money to market to everybody but think of it like a trickle effect you go for that market that you're going for 
you get your menu set, you know what they want, and then it's a trickle down effect, right? And you wanna make sure that you know the, your location, the demographics, what people are looking for, because in seeing your competition, like Lisa going around looking at the food trucks, because then you can differentiate yourself from everybody else out there. So you are going to provide a service or product that is different in ways that from your competition, right? Like Red Lobster. What does Red Lobster do? Seafood. Seafood, right? They sell seafood. Um, a hotel, they might have a free happy hour or the free continental breakfast. My mom can't stay at a place unless there's a free continental breakfast. Um, and then you can then take it and look at your market, what your niche is going to be. If you're going to go that route, like Dave and Buster's, Dave and Buster's, they combine food plus entertainment, right? You can play the games. You can do all that fun stuff. You want to make and sure. Chuck E. Cheese. Yep. Chuck E. Cheese, right? Because. I an adult Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, <laughs> The adult Chuck E. Cheese, it is. It's the adult Chuck E. Cheese. But that's why it's so important because you want to make sure that you created, you have your possibility. You have the dream that you want, right? This is what you want to do. You set the goal of what you want to do. Then you got to do that research. You have to know what your market is looking for. You need to make sure that you have it down so that you can create your plan. And you have your strategy because is that location going to work? What type of menu will work for your target market? Will you be able to really differentiate yourself from your competition? That's the key of it. And that's, and it all boils back down to your menu too, right? Because if you see that there is a bunch of healthy people in your area, or um, you say you have a high Jewish community, you're not going to put a lot of pork on there, right? Because they're not going to eat it. So, and you want them to come to your place. You want them spending their money at your establishment, not going to somewhere else. Chef, can I jump in for one second? Yeah, sure. There's also um, a kind of like a, a section of demographics that's a little bit different that Chef hit on a little bit that they sometimes refer to as psychographics. Uh, so if you're looking at demographics, they're really things like race and age and family size and income, where psychographic is a little bit different. So it may be like religious beliefs, or it may be things that groups of people have in common. Uh, so something like um, people that like video games, or um, it could be hunters, right? People that hunt are going to possibly be more interested in certain type of cuisine than say vegans. So vegans would be another um, based more on beliefs and lifestyles versus the concrete age, um, you know, location, income, that sort of thing. So something else to think about that you've also got that option as far as um, deciding on who your target market may be. You've also got some of that psychographic type of information. So just something else to think about is no one forget to mention. Yeah, that was perfect. Thank you, Chef Suzanne. That was fantastic. And it's true. And, you know, the takeaway is, is to realize all everything that you can look at and you can research because you want to make sure that you do your research. You have that plan in place because as an investor, I'm going to want to know if you did your homework. Did you find out that, yes, you should do a fish special on Fridays? Why should you do that fish special on Fridays? Why is that so important during this time frame? And that is where you can go to your investor and say, well, yeah, I know for a fact that this is going to work because, you know, 40% of this location is Catholic or whatever you how you can back up what you're saying. You need to make certain that you can back up everything that you can, that you're saying. So that's why all this stuff is so important to look at. And then before we turn it over to Chef Suzanne to talk about your assignment, 
We remember your discussion is due on Saturday at 11:59. Next week is Thanksgiving, so our live session will be on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Are you traveling? Are you going to your in-laws? Are you doing the big drive? That's okay. That's why we have the live archives, um, the archive sessions, right? So just click on that archive. You can pop that in while you're making your apple pie. Won't that be fun? Having this in the background. Yay! Fun fact, how many people know that Jingle Bells is actually a Thanksgiving song? Anybody? I did. Yep, right? Fun fact. All right, I'm going to pass this over to Chef Suzanne to go over your assignment for this week. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Nothing that I do when it comes to sharing screens is ever real quick, so I'm just telling stories. All right, does everybody see the assignment page about demographics? Yes? Yes, okay, cool. Okay, so here's what your assignment looks like for this week. Over here, there are four different menus that you can choose from. So you're gonna choose, click on two of those. And so I clicked on Shell on Wheels. Can anybody see that? So there's what one of the menus looks like. So it just gives you some information. It's a very small, basic menu. All right, so you might look at this. Uh, this may be one of the two that you choose. All right, then what you're gonna do is, based on that information that you can see, you're going to list two potential target demographics for that restaurant. So if you choose Shell on, Shell on Wheels, you're going to share with me what you think two of the potential target demographics are for that business, All right? Then you're gonna to explain to me basically why. why. Where did you come up with that? What aspect of that menu led you to say that particular target demographic? And then again, based on that menu, you're also gonna tell me two demographics, I'm sorry, one demographic, one, just one, that you don't think that Shell on Wheels is going to try and pursue and explain why on that also. All right, so you know, open up this menu, you're gonna look at it and go, okay, here's what I think two of the target demographics will be and why. And here's what I think one tar target demographic is that they're not gonna go for and here's why. All right, so is there right or wrong answers? Not exactly, but if you say that you think that their target market is 80 year old women, that's fine. You just have to explain to me why you have to elaborate on why you think that that would be one of their demographics for this restaurant, All right? Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? It's, I think it's a little scarier looking than it actually is. You're just gonna look at a couple of these different, just pick two out of the four, and then potential temp target demographic and why, and one that you don't think they would probably ever go after, and why. Hey, Chef. Yes. Uh, where is this place? This is a really nice menu. <laughs> these are not, I think these were actually created just for this okay. course, right? It's pretty okay. cool, right? <laughs> these, this is really creative menu. I really like it. Yeah, somebody, I'm not sure who made these. Uh, What's the show? One of the, some of the instructors, I, I was not a part of that, but I like them too. So they're, I think they're all really nice. Uh, so does anybody have any questions on that? It's, it's like I said, once you get looking at it, I think you're all gonna, uh, be fine with it. You just need to yeah. explain. Chef, I wanted to know, like, for like the El Gato Grande, that restaurant, right? I mean, I eat Spanish food every day. It's for everybody. So I'm thinking, you know. Well, it's actually what the whole point of this class was today is that it's not for everybody, right? The whole point of today was about <laughs> demographics and trying to be able to um, think what could, who could they actually be gearing that towards, right? Because McDonald's isn't trying to get everybody. So when you look at the McDonald's menu, you kind of get an idea of who they might be going for. So in this case, who might they be trying to go, to, you know, to bring in as their target market and why? And not necessarily who would like the food and who would like the food, kind of. Not exactly. Like, I think it's not like. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little more, um, I'm not sure. How do you explain that, Chef? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. Uh, it, it's not that we're necessarily looking at the, we're looking at the overall menu, the whole theme and the whole concept. Who do you really think that would be the most interested in that? Like who, 
who, if there's, you know, a thousand menus sitting out on tables, who's going to grab that menu and really be like, oh, this is where I want to go? You know, who are they really trying to bring in? So would, they, would you mean by like that, like bringing in like a, like a couple, the ages between um, 35 to um, 50 that would like that menu? That's what you're trying if to say? That's, that's, a, that's a demographic well, you're looking at all the, things that, all the things that we just talked about, all the different types of demographics. So you may base it on like things that Chef just went over. So age, um, household incomes. Um, I'm blanking here, Chef. What else did we just <laughs> I mean, if you oh, have a, so many different kinds, yeah. And if you have a menu that's all vegetarian and vegan, are you going to market this to hunters? No, definitely not. No. So that's the type of thing that you got to think of. Like my, my menu is all based for vegan friendly food. I am not going to go after anybody who's a meat eater. Like, you know, like I'm, I'm going to try to go for those people who are vegetarian and vegan, right? So think about it like that. And remember, it's a broad, this demographics is a very broad definition. It's a broad aspect. There's there are very many sub, sub demographics. And then you just have to focus in on what you think you're going to, would be the best bet for these menus and then explain why because that will tell me what your thought process is so, right? so that is actually probably the most important part is explaining to me why you think that based on what you have seen about that menu so we don't have to pick the four options that you gave us in the example of in the reading saying adults single teenagers seniors we don't have to just pick those four we can no no them. you it is there you know because it okay. may not be singles it may not be teens it could be seniors it could be families with okay. small children it, you know it, there's lots and that's what chef is just saying there's there are so many different like little subcategories when it comes to demographics so no you don't have to use just those handful those are just some examples but there are okay. you know there could be a hundred or a thousand other ways uh, to to do this, and that's why but the most important a, part of this is right, I got it now. Yeah, why it. you think that that is one of their target demographics, and that's but why is it's it okay important. to use the demo um the, the examples that you uh, showed us tonight? You can use the examples. Just remember, you got to explain why. I like we are your investors. Me and Suzanne or Chef Suzanne are your investors, and we want to know why you think this is going to be. A, like you think that this is why you should have your menu be targeted to this area. Why? Win me over with your explanation so I will give you my money. Hey, Chef, can I chime in for a second? Yeah, sure. Uh, so way over here in Ohio on uh, Lake Erie. <gasps> you uh, right? Yeah, so uh, I worked at this island. It's like a destination location, basically. Um, and in the winter time, there's like a population of like 350 that stay on the island throughout the winter. And a majority of those people that stay there, they fish um, out on the lake and catch uh, the perch and the walleye. And so this guy, I know, he set up shack on the ice and all he sold was uh, chili and hot dogs. And it was just geared towards those fishermen. And that's what they ate like every day while they're out there fishing. And it was called chili and wieners. Um, right. Yeah, that's perfect. Right. And then that's what he, I guess he did really well on the ice. And just, you know, he was fishing himself, but he had a little setup out there and turned it into an investment. So, I mean, it worked for, I, I, I was like, that's really cool. Yeah, and because, you know, you just want to make sure that, yeah, you know your clients, you know, like you've done your research. And I have to say, I've lived in New England and I've lived in quite a few different areas and nothing comes close to that bone chilling cold from the lake effect snow off of Lake Erie that really just gets you. And so, yeah, doing chili, like I would, yep, you would just need to do chili the whole time. Because Chef, we got a comment in the box real quick. Can I comment on that real quick? Yeah, yes, please do. 
All right, so uh, the best bet if I want to open a restaurant is not just open something I like to eat and cook, but research demographics. Exactly. That research, we've all, you know, no matter where you live, we've all seen those restaurants that open up and six months later, they're gone. And their food may be amazing, but what they may not have done is all that research. So maybe they put their business in the wrong place because, so maybe they are going to have a steakhouse and they've located it in an area that really isn't going to support it because maybe the income's not high enough, um, you know, that there's reasons why things don't succeed. And so the idea behind all of this demographic information is to kind of get you in the, that spirit of doing that research so that you don't make those same mistakes that many other restaurants have done. Because I don't even know anymore what they say the percentage of business restaurants that fail because it's a very scary number. But I like to think that it's because they've not done their homework, that they just went, I make good food, I'm going to open a restaurant, I'm going to sell it. And believe it or not, that's not enough. There's more. You've got to do that homework. You've got to understand who your target market is. And something else to think about, which may blow your mind, is you may think, you know, I have the best meatloaf sandwich in the whole world. Everybody loves my meatloaf sandwich. You put that on your menu, nobody buys it. And it could just be that it's just not what your target demographic is interested in. You're just going to have to toss it off the menu someday. And, you know, so that, you know, it's really hard to kind of wrap your mind around these things some, sometimes. Um, but it's, you know, it's all about the research and the paying attention to what's going on that will hopefully make you all the most successful. And that's, that's our goal with sharing all this with you. Yeah. Remember that uh, awesome toilet bowl concept restaurant that I emailed to you guys? where all the, you know, that ice cream looked like poop. So would you guys think, like, you may think, like, I have the perfect idea. I'm going to open up a bathroom restaurant, and it's all going to be toilet themed. I think it's fabulous, and I'm going to be so excited to open it. Would you guys go to my restaurant? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs down. You wouldn't want to eat out of a toilet bowl? the little urinals for your drink that they have. So that's where you got to think of it that way, right? That, you know, you may not like that toilet bowl theme. In Taiwan, that restaurant is still going strong. They actually tried to open one in the U.S. It did not do well. So that's where it's important to do the research and to explain what you found. You may, it's the same thing with your concept. You have a beautiful concept and you just have to explain it, but you have to explain it as you write it down so everybody can see it. Everybody can enjoy it, right? All right, guys. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Anybody? Anybody? No? Well, it has been fun. I am looking forward to seeing everybody next what day? Tuesday. Tuesday, not Tuesday. Wednesday. 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 I saw Tuesday. Eliza say Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're on Wednesday. Yeah. Same time, just Wednesday. Different okay. day. Okay. All right, guys. And remember, discussion, assignments, and I'll see everybody next Wednesday. Have mm -hmm. a great, great weekend. Right. You too. Good night, Chef. Bye, Bye guys. Night, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.